Roles and Responsibilities of Welfare Officers. So in this session, we'll first go through the history and on the evolution of this position. So this started when welfare officers were made as replacement of jobbers in 1931 by the Royal Commission on Labor. So during 1931, Royal Commission on Labor recommended the appointment of labor officers in factories and establishments so that the position of jobbers who were personals who laid off workers in the establishments could be avoided. So before this labor officers, the function was carried out by jobbers who used to simply lay off workers in the establishments without any rules or conduct or regulations. In 1934, Bombay Mill Owners Association persuaded the state government to appoint labor officers in their factories to oversee the welfare activity of their employees. By 1940, an estimated 26 labor officers were appointed in cotton mills in Mumbai or in Bombay. During World War II, police functions changed to welfare functions in factories and establishments. So in 1946, that is by 1946, significance of labor investigation committee increased and is conveyed through Factories Act of 1948. Next, we'll take a look at what are the roles and responsibilities of labor welfare officers. Labor welfare officers are subordinate to none other than the general management of an enterprise. Labor welfare officers are selected based on personalities, integrity, understanding of individuals, linguistic skills, etc. None of the employees should be dismissed except by managers after consultation with labor officers. No employee should be dismissed without an adequate cause and it is the responsibility of the labor officers to make sure that nothing otherwise happens in the enterprise. Labor officers should also gain confidence of the workers. That is an unsaid rule in an enterprise. Now let us see what are the objectives of labor officers. So the main objective of labor officers are eliminate the evils of jobber systems. Previously, before labor officers, the position was in place. This was carried out by jobbers. Now, after uh, labor officers came into picture, there are no jobber, jobbers in the enterprise. So it completely eliminates the evils of jobber systems. Improving administration of the mills. That is one of the responsibility of labor officers. And finally, act as a liaison between state labor commissioners. Next, we'll take a look at what are the qualifications needed to become labor officers. So a labor officer, in order to become a labor officer, he or she should get a degree from a university recognized by state governments of India. A degree or diploma is a must in social science recognized by state governments of India. And then there should be adequate knowledge of language spoken by majority of workers in where factory or mine is located. So in a colloquial sense, the labor officers should excel, should use the language of the normal language spoken by majority of workers where a factory or mine is located. Some of the provisions applicable to role of labor welfare officers. This is according to Section 58Q and Rule 72 of Mines Rules Act 1955. So if due to illness, temporary absence uh, of the labor officer is unable or the labor officer is unable to perform duty, agent, owner or manager should authorize a person to act as welfare officer or in equal capacity. The next rule is a written notice of discharge, resignation or termination of a welfare officer should be sent within seven days to owner, agent or to the manager. So this is as per Mines Rules 1955, Section 58Q and Rule 72. According to Factories Act, 
Model rules framed by Factories Act is laid down as chart of duties, which includes supervision of safety, supervision of welfare activities, supervision of security aspects for workers, and it also suggests measures for harmonizing of industrial relations. Now let us see what are the functions of welfare officers. So even before that, there are a few more items which uh, uh, needs attention here. Uh, the provisions of uh, the role of labor officers here, according to Factories Act 1948 and according to Section 49, a labor welfare officer need to be appointed in a factory or establishment that employs 500 or more workers. According to Plantation Labor Act 1951 and according to Section 18.1 and 18.2, a plantation that employs more than 300 or more workers should appoint a labor welfare officers. According to Mines Rules 1955 and according to 58Q and Rule 72, which we just explained, a plantation employing workers, those are 500 or more, should appoint a labor welfare officer. A plantation employing 2,500 or more workers should appoint an additional labor welfare officer according to modifications heard on this rule on 2008. Now let us go and uh, see what are the functions of labor welfare officers. Functions are broadly classified as under labor welfare activities. So it is classified as labor welfare activities. Functions can also be labor administration and labor relations. So first we'll see what is labor welfare activities briefly. So labor welfare activities including welfare function, assistance, implementing legislative and non-legislative provisions regarding welfare, safety, security, and hours of work. So these activities center around legislative and non-legislative provisions regarding welfare, safety, security, and hours of work of the employees or the workers. Labor administration, including personal organizational discipline, that comes under labor administration. Personal organizational discipline, safety, and medical examinations will be covered under labor administration. Under labor relations, conciliation, settlement of grievances, administration and education of workers come into picture. So these are the three main functions of labor welfare officers, which are welfare activities, administration and labor relations. The welfare officer is not supposed to deal in disciplinary cases against a person in a mine, unless it is directed by the conciliation officer, labor court or a tribunal to appear as an independent witness. There is, however, no demarcation between personal management functions and welfare functions carried forward and executed by labor welfare officers in a mine. So this concludes the, ro uh, the roles and responsibilities of welfare officers. Thank you.